Words of significance, greetings ladies and gentlemen, this is Sir Twiggy and welcome back for a Twiggy Quickie tutorial number two for Project Zomboid. Today we're going to continue from having a create a character here. We're just going to have our learning character jump into the beginner mode of the game. And what I'm going to concentrate on teaching you guys today is what to do in the very first day of the game. I'm going to try and make it as smooth as possible with as much information as little time as possible because I know your time is valuable to you. So before we even get the game loaded up yet, it's still loading here, I want to let you know the very first important things to do once you get into your house is to check every single container in the building. So the first thing we're looking at here, we got trapping for beginners. Okay, so that's a book that we can use to assist us in a skill that we did not take at the beginning of the game. Visible in your C menu, you see all the skills that we've got covered here. We didn't cover cooking first aid, electrical, firearms, or any of our agility skills. So any of that, if we want to learn and get into it, is going to be extraordinarily difficult for our character owing to the fact that he's going to have a huge detriment as compared to someone who has a single point in it. So I'm looking right now, I'm just grabbing some food very quickly. We've already had a school bag in beginner mode, you'll notice, with a baseball bat and a hammer in it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and equip this in both of our hands, and we're going to start putting all of our food and stuff into our bag. Those of you who don't know, you can hold shift button while you're in your inventory, select multiple items, and you pull it over to the right into the bag. So your bag is life. Bag is life in Project Zomboid because it not only stores things for you and helps you stay organized, but it gives you weight reduction, which means you can get more stuff on you at a given time, more things in a loot run, more things move from one base to another. In your first day, you want to make sure you go through your first house and get as much stuff as possible. Things like bowls, cooking pots, food, things that's tailored specifically to your skill. So in my example here we have trapping and foraging, which means we want to start looking for trapping and foraging books that will further assist us. We want to look for things like saws, hammers, nails for carpentry. Uh, that also cross applies into trapping. Now if you're on the basic survival mode, you are not going to start with a backpack and that's going to be the number one thing that you find in your first house if you can. If you cannot, that's what's going to be your goal moving forward from that point. You want to keep looking for a bag. That's the thing. Bag is life. You want to start getting food after that, whether it be canned goods or perishables from fridges. Okay, here you see this house didn't start with a bag, so if we weren't in beginner mode, then we would already have a problem. We'd have to have, have go to another house and look for a bag. Because if you get over encumbered, you're draining your stamina, you're going to become slower over time, and that's going to result in you getting caught by zombies. All right, we've got one more sheet, and that looks like pretty much all of the stuff that we're going to find in our first house. So now if you've completed this first step, the next thing you're going to want to do is start looking outside and see how many zombies are in your immediate area. I'm also going to grab these farming supplies, actually. I almost forgot. Now, since we also have a baseball bat to start, you notice we're in beginner mode. If I did not have this, I would have taken that frying pan and used that as a weapon. So in general... If your character is not geared towards combat, which ours is not, you notice he has maintenance blade and blunt, but not accuracy. So we didn't take any skills to help us with combat. So in the beginning, you're going to want to try to avoid combat. That's what I'm going to teach you in this tutorial. So holding down my left control here key, you can see that I'm sneaking here. This is also achievable through holding down right click, whichever you find more preferable. I've I'm a fan of the left control. Another thing that's important to mention that while you're sneaking around like this, you're gaining experience. All the actions that you do in the game gain you experience pretty much anything. So whether you're fighting a zombie, sneaking around, sprinting, carrying too much weight, that's the type of experience. If you're planting crops, barricading windows, chopping down trees and sawing them into planks, all these things give you not only specific experience towards another skill point, but experience towards the specific skill, which results in a system that requires you to gain the required experience for a given skill and have enough experience for a skill point to achieve the next level. So in our example here, I've got a tiny little sliver of experience in light-footed. If I had a full skill point, I couldn't put that in there. You have to wait till it fills up, and then when you click it, it highlights. Now what we're doing right now, we're basically just sneaking around, we're trying to avoid zombies and try and find another house that we can get into with the minimal risk of conflict. The thing about Project Zomboid, especially when you're learning it, is you have to realize that death is not certain by you being ripped to pieces. Death can be certain by a scratch, and that's very, very important. It doesn't matter if you're on day one, if you're on day 100, if you get scratched, there's a percent chance that you're going to get infected from that singular scratch 
and then you have a matter of day or a couple of days, and you will perish, and that is the end of your run. Now, despite the fact that it's the end of your run, you can still enter the same game world, if you so choose, but any experience that you've accrued in that given time in here is gone forever, and you will have to go through all that effort again, duplicate that effort. So if you have a character on day one who perishes, there's very little detriment. It's very easy to say, oh, I'm just going to start over again here now, and I can get what I lost back very quickly, and I already have a reserve of items in a given location. I think that's actually a really good idea for people who are still learning the game, and you want to achieve things, get used to the game before you move on to higher difficulty levels. Now, you may have noticed I just ran for my life and there was alarm blaring while I was talking. Yes, there are alarms in the game, even in beginner mode, despite the fact that it's easier to get in through locked doors, you can still get alarms go off. My number one piece of advice is just get out of that area. In survival mode, eight months later, online, you're gonna find that that alarm is very, very dangerous. In our case, we managed to get away rather quickly, we didn't get surrounded by a lot of zombies, we're fine. Now, some of you may also be wondering, where is he going, where is he wandering? I am very experienced with the map, which is a sort of a bonus to me making these tutorials. It's just like, I know where to go to get around. But in a lot of cases, people are still getting used to the game. So you may want to play the game in one of two ways, or perhaps a blend of the two. One, you may want to simply explore and figure out the game on your own and, and figure out where locations are and have fun with that. In other cases, it can be a serious detriment that you don't know even the basic places to go. Things to find a warehouse, uh, places to find warehouses, places to find medical supplies or hospitals, where to find really high value houses. So you can check the Blind Coder Mapping Project. I will link that in the description of the video. It is a community made map by Mr. Blind Coder. He's a genuine German gentleman. He's a great guy. I suggest you have a look at that if you're getting irritated or if you're down with the exploration style of gameplay, then you can simply, you know, muddle through. So day one, we're trying to find safe places to loot. We're trying to avoid as little zombie attention as possible. In this case, I want to keep going in this direction, but they're in my way, so I'm going to have to just sprint through, and when we clear line of sight, we can start sneaking again. That's an important thing to mention as well. Actually, when you're sneaking around, there's still a percent chance that they will notice you. But if you get out of their line of sight and start sneaking again, then there's also a chance that you can break that line of sight and break their sort of following you. And then you can continue forward with little to no problem. In this case, they might spot me again because I'm coming back out. Nope, they didn't. Even at low experience levels on beginner, you can outsmart the zombies. Now that guy's probably going to see me. Yeah, I stepped into his, I stepped into his vision bubble. Now, it's eventual that you're going to come into contact with a zombie when you don't want to be. You don't always want to swing and hit them. Maybe you just want to get rid of them. While you're holding your left control button, press spacebar, and you will push them down. That'll give you time to get further away and break the line of sight without smacking them, which creates sound, and that can attract other zombies. So it is a safe alternative to just sort of stop a single zombie. Also, when you shove, you can sometimes shove two zombies down at the same time, which can be highly handy if you're in a tight situation like in a house and there's two zombies in a bathroom and you made the mistake of opening the bathroom door, shove them back in and close the door. All right. It seems like we're pretty much clear of the zombies here now. What we're going to come to up here is another little trailer yard. It's not really high value area, but I'm going to try and point out the things that you're looking for on day one. Now, in the case of a carpenter character like this, you're going to start looking in garbage cans and stuff, looking for garbage bags, because that becomes very valuable later on. Also, important day one loot is going to be things specific to your class, so in case of my farmer here, finding all the farming supplies, finding a trowel. Canned goods are always good. Bags of chips. We've got seeds here as well, and chocolate. All these things have their own values and bonuses. I suggest you take some time and just look at specific items, like chocolate and chips and stuff, like they give you different unhappiness unhapp help and all that kind of stuff. So there's lots of little items that if you just take the time to look at them, they can be really helpful. Now, you may notice that my capacity here is 14.65 out of 15. That's your carrying capacity. So this bag is at the point where hardly anything else can fit in. So we're going to have to start moving things to the surface level of our inventory until we find a better bag. In fact, let's search this house for a better bag, and I'll describe the different types of loot containers in a house. I'm sorry, that should have been mentioned long ago. These are counters. They generally have food-type loot, canned foods, kettles, excuse me, goodness gracious, water bottles, um, nails can sometimes be found in these top cupboards. As you'll notice, they have a different icon than the different ones, than the bottom ones. 
You also find bathroom containers in here. So these bathroom counters have things like your sheets, your razors, your comb, your first aid supplies will be found in here, different medicines like sleeping tablets, which can still fit in my nearly overcapacity bag. These are bookshelves. This bookshelf has nothing on it, but when it does, it'll have an icon on it. You'll find your books, your magazines, skill books. This is a bedroom uh, counter. You do sometimes find baseball bats, which is a nice find here, but I already have one, given the fact that we started on beginner. You also find your bags in there. An important thing that is also uh, supposed to be mentioned here, and I think I forgot it, these are low value as compared to, say, a two-story brick building. Or, say, a two-story building with nice white siding over this away. That's where we're going to head towards. Again, there's no need to rush. A big point of death in Project Zomboid is becoming comfortable, feeling like you're safe, and then you just make a stupid decision. A perfect example would be, um, just a couple of days ago, I had a character that was one month and 15 days alive, and I slept in a Spiffo burger. And guess what happened? A zombie came through the glass, and it bit me, because I made a stupid decision. Because I thought, hey, I'll be fine here, I'll take a nap, I'll be fine to sleep for six hours. I became complacent. And that resulted in my death. If I had taken the time to be more careful, find a place that had, like, a storeroom, and set up the te a tent kit in the storeroom, that would have made a huge difference. Now we've got a zombie coming after us. If we don't do anything about her, she's going to start thumping on the door. Like him. And that's going to drive all other zombies to the this area. So what we're going to do is we're going to be calm and careful about it. We're going to push them. That's the space bar. We're going to get by their heads. And we're going to stomp. She got back up. We do the same thing. Just push her down. And again, space bar to stomp. So now, we've got these two taken care of. Nobody outside here heard that happen because I didn't whap them with my bat making lots of noise. Now, stomping can still draw attention, especially in survival in 8 months later mode because the zombies are a little bit more keen. But in your beginner mode, this is a great way to get used to getting into a house safely. And not drawing the attention of all the surrounding zombies. As you can see, I killed those three zombies, and this guy out here still doesn't have a clue. Now, this is a house that I am particularly fond of. If you can find it on the Blind Coders Mapping Project, it is on the northeast side of Maldra. It is out by the edge. You'll be able to see it there, past the little trailer park. It is a great little spot. It's on the edge of town. It is not the safest place in the whole game, no, because it's still close to civilization. So that means zombie hordes can still meander by here, break in through, even if you do have like, reinforced windows and things. But it's good enough for day one, and it's good enough for sort of a temporary safe house. So, if we're going to use this as our safe house on night one, what we're going to want to do is, first of all, put our loot down. Well, actually, no. That's a bad precedent to be setting. No, don't put your loot down. Make sure all your windows are safe. Okay, there's nobody inside this window. There's nobody inside that window. We're going to take out our sheets. And we're going to secure this place. At least a little bit. So that we know by moving around, zombies aren't going to see us through the windows. So what we did was we took the sheets and stuff that we looted going around on our first day. And we're going to put those up in the windows. Then you right click the window and close curtains. So now we can move around down here in our main living area without any zombies detecting. Unless we go in this side room, which we just won't for now. So what we're going to try and do now is put our perishable foods in the fridge because, yes, they do go bad. Yes, they can go bad rather quickly if you forget about them. So, day one, we went out around. We found some canned foods. We found some things that are specific to our skill group, like our seeds, like our nails, like a hammer, skill books that will help us. So what I'm doing now is you go in the bag. If you click on these buttons on the top, you can organize them by name, by category type. We're going to categorize it as food, and you can see all of our food and our perishable food came together here, which makes it easy for us to click and drag and select everything and then just bring it across here and put it into your fridge. So that's how inventory management works in this game. You've got your surface level inventory here, which is on your person. There is your bag, which is in your equipped bag and giving you weight reduction and increased storage. Your key ring, which you can acquire keys from zombie corpses. We'll go over that in the next episode. You will also see on this side the lootable containers. So this is different types of counters, our fridge, 
All right, so we're gonna finish offloading all of our loot, considering we have a full bag here. I'm not really gonna concentrate on organizing the inventory. We're just mostly gonna be doing this to keep things all grouped together. So we can find things when we need them. <laughs> 